More news from the Microsoft Build Conference. Facial recognition makes me look a lot younger. And Martin Sargent shows us that he is neither old nor dead. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twitch. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 328 for Thursday, April 30th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Dropbox for Business. Dropbox for Business lets your team sync and share files just like Dropbox. And you can connect to Dropbox for Business with over 300,000 apps for project management. Visit dropbox.com slash business for a free 14-day trial. That's dropbox.com slash business. Welcome. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks to everyone who wrote to me yesterday to remark on the imbalance of Apple discussion versus Microsoft discussion on what was obviously a big day for Microsoft. I agree it was a big day for them. It's a big week and not just the fact that they were announcing a lot of new stuff. They announced a lot of interesting new stuff. There's no question that making it easier for developers to convert apps written for Android and iOS to run on Windows 10 is newsworthy. To make it all up to you, Windows fans, here are adorable pictures of puppies that you can download on your Windows 7 or Windows 8 device. And here's a little more Microsoft news from Build today. First, Microsoft released a preview of Windows 10 that runs on Raspberry Pi and Arduino devices. During the keynote yesterday, Microsoft unleashed a Raspberry Pi robot on stage to show how hardware can be combined with virtual reality. There it is. <laughs> this idea is that the HoloLens could help makers envision how their Raspberry Pi creations will work or how their envisioned robots would behave, ideally, so those robots don't rise up and destroy us someday. Uh, the Next Web also reports that Microsoft is opening up applications for developers to test iOS and Android app conversion tools. We will have more Microsoft build news after the break, but first, I would like to introduce you to my old friend, Martin Sargent, who you already know. Welcome, Martin. Hey, Megan. How are you? I'm good. So what have you been up to? Well, uh, you know, I'm still doing a lot of shows, but uh, I'm uh, r really big on the European Internet now. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, unless you live over in Europe, you can't, you can't get my shows. You can't get them on the American Internet. Right. I, I, I guess so. So you and I, of course, worked together on the screensavers, and you were then went on to host your own show, Unscrewed. You did several shows on Revision 3. You did This Week in Fun on Twit. Then you went all Don Draper on us, got a job in advertising. That's where you are now in your big fancy office. I am. I'm here in my big fancy office in a high rise on Market Street in San Francisco. I work for a wonderful little boutique B2B agency. I like to say B2B plus because that's how good we are. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a different lifestyle than television. It's a much different challenge. But I got to say it's a well, it's not as fun. I'm not going to lie to you, Megan. I'm so jealous of you right now. I want to be back where you are right now. I'm so thrilled to be here on your show. Well, you, of course, are coming back. You're going to host the screensavers, the new screensavers. I don't think that's a secret anymore. I think. I you. don't think so either. Wait, I, I'm what? Oh, me? You have to do it because uh, we you're, announced you're, it. You're like a regular on the new screensavers, right? Uh, I'm going to be hosting probably about once a month. We'll see. Um, That's it, because you're you're like riding the Segway mm -hmm. in the in the beginning of it. That's because I was so good at riding the Segway, really. So we'll see. <laughs> Leo's going to be hosting every show, and then we're going to be switching off to to all the people. So everyone has a turn. Is is Leo there? He is there. Could you hear him laughing? Oh my god! Yeah, I could. Leo, hi. I'm so nervous. I didn't know you were going to be there. <laughs> here, here he comes. Hey, Marty. Hey, how are you? I didn't you, know man? you were going to be here. I would have come in earlier. How you doing? Oh yeah. I'm doing great. I'm Marty, doing great. I'm Marty's so one of the excited. original uh, Twit hosts with This Week in Fun. Mm -hmm. This Week in Fun. Yeah, fun. thanks for canceling that, Leo. Uh, okay, I'll be leaving now. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. The, I, I thought it was that you got the job in advertising. we got to get our story uh, straight here. Uh, no, I'm just joking <laughs> around. I cancel that damn show. Yes, Leo is here. He's usually <laughs> not here. fun about it. It wasn't fun. It was this week in hell. All right, do you want to stay here? <laughs> no, no. For, for the audience, I think it was. No, right? no, it was a great show. I don't, I don't remember what happened. Uh, Leo is here. He's uh, hosting the last Another episode. show I'm canceling. <laughs> <laughs> this is just falling apart, Martin. <laughs> As every show that I appear on does, you know, I've had about, 
I don't know, a baker's dozen shows canceled over my lifespan. So, yeah, this is probably not a good idea to have me on here, especially on a tech news show. I mean, people are wondering, like, what tech news could Martin Sargent possibly be bringing here tonight? Like, did he rob a Best Buy? Because like, that's, like, the only business I would have on this show right now. Well, Leo's actually here because he's hosting the last episode of The Gizwids, who you originally brought to Tech TV. Dick DiPertolo, he is the man. I love that guy. Please tell him I said hello. Um, I miss him. And I'm excited to watch this last episode, but I'm not excited to hear that it's the last episode. Well, he's going to be taking it uh, on his own, so it'll, you'll be, still be able to see it. So Okay, Don't good. Don't worry. I hope so. Leo's a jerk. <laughs> no. <laughs> so when I asked you to come on, you said that you were really desperate to cover the technology behind the old and the dead. So. Well, I was, I'm not desperate to cover it, but I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I didn't, I didn't really want to talk about tech at all. I mean, I, I, we could. As you know, I, I love tech, and I probably know more about tech than any living American. But <laughs> truth to be told, if I hear one more person drone on and on and on about the Apple Watch or Microsoft Edge this week, I, I think I could die of boredom. And I started to think if I could die of boredom for this, could other people? And therefore, if I start droning on about the Apple Watch, could I kill people of boredom? And then could I kill people in your audience? And as somebody who's had a Baker's Dozen shows canceled, I know you need all the people in your audience that you can get. So uh, I decided maybe we shouldn't talk about tech. But at the same time, this is a tech news show, so we kind of have to talk about tech. So let's talk about how tech can restore life. Okay, good. So That, that the, was a long way in, wasn't it? <laughs> so what you're saying is uh, some of my viewers and listeners might die someday, so I should do something to keep them around just in case they do? There's been a lot of very interesting stories in the tech press this week about how technology can disrupt death. <laughs> Okay, so let's. You, you told me about one uh, called Project Elysium. What, Pro, what's yeah. that all about? So there's a couple guys in Australia, um, some uh, VR programmers, who have come out with something called Project Elysium. It's an app for the Oculus Rift that they say might one day bring the dead sort of back to life through virtual reality. Um, basically, what they're trying to do is digitally graft a person's, you know, voice, likeness, demeanor, quirks, entire personality into a VR representation that we, the living, can interact with. That's really interesting. Is it, is it so, is it for real? Can we do it now? Should we do it on well, us? We're going to find out, actually, because these guys are, could we? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if anyone really wants it. But um, we're going to find out come May 7th because they're preparing this thing for a contest um, in which all these other programmers are also preparing things for the uh, um, Oculus Rift. And so they're up for $100,000. So if they could bring the dead back to life through this thing successfully, I think that they deserve the $100,000. So I watched their video, and being that they can't even shoot decent video, I'm not sure how they're going to pull this off. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they were meant that that video was meant to not look so good, don't you think? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm losing faith in this. So another project you were talking about was, uh, well, from Google. Of course, a few years ago, Project Calico was announced by Google. That was designed to make sure that none of us ever die ever. Uh, that is maybe not working so well because Google ha now has a project that uses robots to bring people back from the dead. Explain that. Sort of, yeah. So Project Elysium, this is not the only tech effort going on right now to bring back the dead. On March 31st, first, Google filed a patent for bringing celebrities and dead loved ones back to life in robotic form. So you have to question whether or not Google's for real with this thing. It seems pretty far-fetched. But on the other hand, they have bought, I believe, eight robotics companies over the past year. So they must be kind of bullish in this robotics thing. So maybe they do think it's a good idea. So I, for one, am not so sure it's a good idea. I don't know if you remember a few years ago, ConAgra Foods, they own Orville Redenbacher Popcorn. Uh -huh. They came out with a commercial for Orville Redenbacher that used this Orville Redenbacher robotic simulation that absolutely terrified children. It was the most awful thing 
you you could imagine. I mean, I think we have some video of that, perhaps. Oh, you should play this. That actually, if there's any children, oh, yeah, watching right now, you should probably These leave. MP3 players get lighter every day. <laughs> Would you believe this little baby holds? So Orville Red Redenbacher, of course, died back when you and I were still in college, which was a long time ago. So it was a great loss, yeah. <laughs> so that that's not him. That's an Orville Red Redenbacher robot. I know. Could you tell? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's disturbing. Uh, it is. So, yeah, I mean, this thing, is, as you can imagine, kids were really scared about this, and it kind of ruined popcorn for a whole generation of American <laughs> children. Kind of like you remember when we were kids, that movie Poltergeist? Yes. It came out, and that movie, because of the scary clown, and it pretty much destroyed the American circus industry for <laughs> people of our generation. Nice. I mean, I'm still terrified of clowns. I don't know about you. I, I am, yes. Clowns and mm -hmm. bees. I do recall you were also very terrified of bees. Well, you got to bring that up right now. <laughs> we're doing well here. We were, I'm now I'm all nervous. I'm sorry. I finally okay. got over the Leo thing being there, and now you got to bring up bees. Okay, okay. Let's move on uh, to some stories that you found about preserving people after their death, besides yeah, this. So, so so there are other ways that, other techie ways that people are working on right now to kind of bring people back from the dead. One of this is a uh, French company who announced that they are coming out with a new perfume that can smell like your dead relatives. Hmm. Yeah. Like when they were alive, right? <laughs> like one, one hopes when they're alive. Okay. Yeah, otherwise, yeah. Um, they haven't exactly announced how they're going to pull this off, but they say that all they need in order to do it is a scrap of the dead person's clothing, and then they can distill that somehow into a very good likeness, olfactory likeness of that person. Uh, would you do this? Have you set aside I, some clothes for this purpose yet? Well, I, I think it would probably be for the good of the country if I were to do this. But um, I, I don't know. This kind of seems like old news to me. I mean, I've had a bottle of something for a long time that every time I open it up, it, it uh, reminds me of my mother. I mean, it's just a cheap bottle of gin. But, um, <laughs> you know, that works pretty well for me. Hey, Mom. <laughs> All right, let's move on to old people. Why, why don't we? Now, you say uh, you have did some research into the way old people smell and the science behind that. There, there is some science behind this. This is kind of an old story. It came out a few years ago, but it's a propos of what we're talking about. Um, some researchers found out that, you know, that old person smell that people talk about? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is actually a real thing. It's been proven scientifically. Mm. Not only that, there's more smell news out there. Um, other scientists have uh, found out recently that the key to happiness could be in smelling a happy person's sweat. So I have heard this, that sweat so smells different. I do the Bikram Yoga where everybody sweats a lot. And there was someone there that said that um, if you're nervous, your sweat smells different right, than if right. you're happy. So That's Right, yeah, so true. you've heard that old expression, like mm -hmm. you, you can, I could smell the fear on them, or animals yes. can smell your fear. Mm -hmm. So some uh, researchers at Utrecht University in the Netherlands have done some testing on this, and they have determined that actually by smelling the armpits of happy people, you also can become happy. Have you tried it? I have not tried it, but I'll tell you what. I wish your audience, they'd probably be enjoying this segment a whole lot more right now if they could smell my armpits, because <laughs> that's how happy I am to be on your show. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of being old, as we both know, it's not really how old you are that matters. It's how old you look, right? So today at the Microsoft Build Conference, they showed off a tool that uses a newly released face detection API that can determine a person's age and gender. Some people got really angry that it didn't work. I love that it didn't work. It said that I looked... 32. There it is. How old I look. I think, yeah, see? 32. I am not, in fact, 32. How old? Let's see. I think we have a picture of how old it said. You looked there, too. Me? You did this with me? <laughs> <laughs> how old does it say I look? Let's let's see. I think uh, we have a picture that maybe, maybe we don't. Oh, you're 32, too. 
Oh, I'm 32 too. <laughs> and it's, it knows you're a man. That's the little figure. And then we have one well, more I would picture. Hope so it knows at least that much. We have one more picture that I from. <laughs> <laughs> and that I think was in 2001, where I was 29, and I believe you are younger than me. So you might have been 27 or 28, maybe even 26. So you are starting to look younger, apparently. So back in 2001, you looked 44. Oh my God, I looked 40. Look at I look awful back no. then. Yeah. No wonder I didn't <laughs> have did. any luck with the ladies back then. <laughs> Tech TV was That's really wearing awful. on you then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Well, Martin, thank you so much. Do you know when you're hosting the new Screensavers show? Is it this month? I, I don't know. A, 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 it, it is. No. Are we in May yet? It's in May. In May. I'll bet, I'll bet that somebody there knows. Maybe Leo or one of the other guys He's, knows. He says it's a mystery. Uh, no, He's no, coming no. over we, here again. He said we may let you do it. <laughs> oh, but not after this, right? <laughs> no, it's coming up. Not, not it's on my Instagram, so I know it's true. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, after this. Uh, I think that uh, people will be dying to know what else you have to talk about, about old and dead things. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Leo again. Uh, <laughs> does he smell like an old person? <laughs> no, he does not. Like a happy one? <laughs> smell his armpit. <laughs> He's smelling his armpits over there. Martin, it was a pleasure to have you. I so enjoyed it. Um, I can't wait to see you again. You are welcome on the show anytime and i said oh, that in front of leo and that. he's That's nodding over there it was a disaster <laughs> people can uh catch up with you at martin Sargent on twitter any place else where they can read your work uh no that's about it but you guess you could see some of my ads well yeah <laughs> uh, you could see some of my ad stuff i did an ad a, a, a while back called broke face that came out pretty good i won a couple awards for it so you can check that out you can see what i'm up to nowadays just search for broke face on uh youtube well, thank you. And of course, there's on YouTube, there's a plethora of all of your old work. Um, hilarious, as always. Yeah, you'll see me looking like I'm 44 years old in that, too. <laughs> thank you, Martin. Take care. Thank you so much. So great to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. Bye, Leo. Bye, Marty. <laughs> and coming up, it's all GitHub and GOATS. But first, many of you use Dropbox. We do, too. I used it to send all those photos of us looking 22 and 24 to everyone who needed to look at them today. Uh, at Twit, we use it to sync and share files, everything from sharing audio MP3s, large graphic files, invoices, program schedules. We have videos that we have to send back and forth. And that way, if someone's working at home, they can send it. And we don't really have to worry about the size. It's great. Uh, people in over 4 million businesses throughout the world use Dropbox for business. You can grow your business. It's a better way to manage accounts, manage billing, have visibility and control of your data. Dropbox for Business lets you do just that, and you don't have to waste time finding a different solution. What is Dropbox for Business? It's the same Dropbox experience your employees already know and love and trust, which means less training and more productivity, simple storage and sharing for any type of file on any program and any device. Dropbox for Business never runs out of space. Each user starts off with a terabyte and it's easy to expand. Staff can collaborate with team members and securely invite and control access to outside partners, clients, and vendors. And most importantly, for IT professionals, you have control. Dropbox for Business has powerful admin controls like remote wipe, intuitive sharing, and permission controls, plus complete audit logs. This way, IT can make sure that only the right people get access to sensitive company data. Dropbox for Business integrates with third-party security and administrations. And last but not least, the robust Dropbox for Dropbox for Business infrastructure uses encryption for file data in transit and at rest, plus segmentation and hashing to anonymize files. Extra security features are, are available like single sign-on and two-step verification. Do you want to give it a try? Take advantage of your employees' familiarity with Dropbox and sign up for Dropbox for Business. Visit dropbox.com slash business for a free 14-day tri trial of Dropbox for Business. That's dropbox.com slash business. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. More Microsoft news. As promised, Azure now offers GitHub enterprise support. GitHub is one of the most popular places for programmers to access source code. And this new partnership means that developers can open GitHub repositories right from Visual Studio. GitHub already supports Amazon Web Services. Microsoft also released the Microsoft Band SDK, which means developers can download the code to access the sensors to create third-party apps for the Microsoft Band. That includes tiles using icons, text buttons, and barcodes. The Microsoft developer site hosts the SDK for Windows, iOS, and Android. 
And Microsoft did not forget all you Minecraft modders out there. The company announced mod support in Visual Studio. That's right, this is a new open source project designed to simplify the development of Minecraft mods in Visual Studio. You can get the source code at GitHub. And I'm not the first one to make this joke, but the Build Conference really is starting to feel like that Oprah show where she gave away all those new cars. And breaking news, we broke the internet again. Yesterday, Wired posted a story about how you could embed, embed MS-DOS games directly into your tweets. You probably already know that you can play over 2,500 MS-DOS games over at archive.org. But as early as a few hours ago, you could also embed them directly into your tweets where you or anyone reading the tweet could play. But as of when I wrote this a little bit earlier, it seems that Twitter or somebody pulled the plug on this feature. So you can paste the link, but anyone who clicks it will be taken to archive.org. I hope I'm the first one to name this Ms. Pac-Man Gate. What is going on? Finally, I found a new app on Product Hunt that I think you might find useful if you've ever wanted to text bomb your friends with pictures of goats. That's right, Goat Attack is a new service that lets you send pictures of go goats to your friends and your enemies. That doesn't come cheap though. It'll cost you a whole dollar and 19 cents for 14 messages. And if you want to send a custom message to your friends, that'll be an extra 50 cents. The service says it's on hold for now, so I couldn't do my journalistic due diligence and check it out for you. But let me know if you've used it. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv, and you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney, and thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.